what the effects are going to be down the road. So I'm going to, I'm going to throw some things out at you, some of which um, you're probably going to know, family members and friends uh, that are dealing with health issues, and it's going to start to ring a bell of how important certain things are. So um, everybody has a mentor at different times of their life. It could be a teacher, it could be a parent, it could be a friend, it could be a coach. Um, and I know you have mentors uh, that you look up to, I do. And there's a, a variety of mentors out there, and I'm going to talk a little bit about that because a mentor is so important when it comes to trying to get to your goals in life. Right now, um, <laughs> your goal is to get to the end of this class. That's kind of like a short-term goal and to get a decent grade, and then to go on and finish your education, and then try to do something in the area that you find interesting. And I did the same thing. I sat in the classroom, and I was kind of clueless in, in terms of my undergraduate degree on where I wanted to go and how I wanted to do, but eventually went into healthcare. Um, but I picked some mentors along the way that helped me out, and, and uh, we're going to talk a little bit about this, but the first thing I want to ask you, and I want your help on, on this, is do you all think that we have a health care crisis going on in our country? Absolutely. Okay. What, what are the issues? We, we spend more money than any other industrialized country on the planet, yet we have some of the sickest people. Great. On, on a, so. Great. What else? What else is a health care crisis that we're all dealing with right now? I know, buddy. Somebody's got an answer out there. Do you think the food that we're eating is as healthy as our parents' and grandparents' generation? No, I don't really know. What are they doing to our foods right now? Processing, um, hormones, hormones chemicals, fertilizers. fertilizers, genetically modifying foods, okay? They're putting a lot of chemicals in things, and that becomes what? It becomes a part of us. Mm -hmm. So when we're going to look at health, and we're going to talk about health today, I'm going to talk about the things that we do every single day, because it's the things that we do every single day that build up. And these aren't things that um, we're not, we, we literally have to pay attention to them now. I'm going to pick on a couple people right in the classroom right here, and we're going to look at different things that are out there in terms of our food choices and what we put in our body. So um, we're going to kind of, what's that? Brownies are great. Brownies are great. One of the best things terrorists could do is just build more fast food restaurants. Maybe add another pharmaceutical company, have a couple more infomercials, and encourage people to eat the way they eat now. And everybody's going to be dead in 100 years. They can just walk right in and don't have to do a thing. <laughs> keeps you alive, and three quarters of what you eat keeps your doctor alive. Cancer rates going up, heart disease going up, stroke going up. We're poisoning ourselves with polyprocessed nutrient depleted foods. One of the major problems is what we do to the soil and the air and the water and everything we take in our food. We, for whatever reason, decided we're going to spray everything with every kind of pesticide, herbicide, larvicide, fungicide. We decided we're going to genetically modify things we don't know anything about. Can we actually improve what's already been created? And the answer is maybe, but not the way we've been doing it. If you want to know what's wrong, look down at the tank wall. It's staring back at you. Think of it as chronic malnutrition, because that's what's going on. But if we think we're going to go to the doctor and get a pill for everything, We've messed the whole point. We have been taught our whole lives to be consumers of modern medicine, which is pharmaceutical medicine. Good health makes a lot of sense, but it doesn't make a lot of dollars. Now, the drug industry has every right to make money. About the, law. the ethics, I think, need to be very closely watched. What the pharmaceutical companies are doing may not necessarily be in the interest of our population. You can be as sincere, and you can be sincerely wrong. Approximately 106,000 Americans die from pharmaceutical drugs each year. And these are people who took the medication as directed. There is a lot more turning to alternatives because what's being done before doesn't work. 
There is no magic bullet, but there is a lifestyle change that reverses serious chronic disease. It's cheap, it's simple, it's safe, it's effective. The solutions are here. They've always been here. Every single person in the world, every culture, every language, every person in the world knows it. You are what you eat. Food does matter. It's a choice. You don't have to be seven. So has everybody heard that before? Food, food matters or you are what you eat? I mean, we've heard that a long, I mean, literally throughout my entire life I've heard that. But it's more than just what you eat, it's also what you absorb. So if the food that you're eating is uh, depleted in its vitamins and minerals because of the way it's grown in agriculture, so it's produced at a mass level to feed so many people so quickly and it's injected with hormones and chemicals and pesticides, and you eat this stuff, what do you think happens to your body over the course of time? What do you think happens to your hormones? It literally wreaks havoc on your body. And 10 and 15 and 20 years down the road, which really is a blink of an eye. I remember sitting here and there's some older guy like me. I'm not old, but an older guy sat up there and I'm like, that. Ah, he's old. I'm not old. But it happens so quickly. And then all of a sudden, you watch the people around you literally suffering with health problems. So really, you need to know something. You're being lied to right now, OK? You're being lied to. Uh, and who's lying to you right now out there? Corporations. Corporations. Marketing. Marketing of food. The, 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 the food industry is such a large, powerful lobbying industry in Washington. Their marketing is designed with colors and pictures and graphics to get us to buy things. You know, why does Coca-Cola use red and McDonald's use red and yellow and all these different colors? They're the most powerful, engaging colors that get us to pay attention. I heard they provoke hunger. I heard those colors provoke hunger. Provoke hunger. Yeah, it stimulates certain things in the brain. Listen, they're not, they're not foolish in how they came up with this. They've studied this. They know that if they put this in front of enough people, people are going to buy it. Okay? So they spend trillions of dollars in marketing to get us to buy certain things. It may not at all be healthy for you. Okay? There's a great movie on uh, HBO. It's been around for about eight or ten years now. Maybe, maybe eight years. Called Super Size Me. Some of you may have seen it. It's about a guy that literally went every day to McDonald's for 30 days and he ordered breakfast, lunch, and dinner at McDonald's and if they asked if he wanted to supersize it, he supersized it. And in 30 days, all his blood levels, he went to three different doctors every week so that one doctor wasn't biased. Three different doctors ran the blood and his levels of cholesterol and hormone changes, his energy level had dropped. He gained 30 pounds in 30 days. How is that possible if McDonald's is healthy? It's not possible. It's not possible at all. But if you feed yourself on this food on a regular basis, your body is going to wreak havoc against you. So a couple things we need to know about. You're getting wrong and lacking information from marketing. TV. TV is big marketing right now. Okay? Does this constitute fitness? Laying on an ab roller? Or, uh, you know, ab chair? No, that, that doesn't constitute fitness. If you're trying to be proactive, because proactive is a big part of what we're talking about. Is this proactive? <laughs> wow. Is, is, is walking your dog while you're inside your car proactive? No. So there's a guy that is my mentor, uh, a lot of people's mentor. He's the godfather uh, of fitness in the U.S. His name was Jack Lane. And at the age of 90, uh, 80, 1994, he was handcuffed and shackled while pulling 80 boats with 80 people in Queens Bay Bridge, Long Harbor, California, a distance of 1.5 miles, 80 years old. How did he do that? You guys have ever seen this guy called the Juice Man? He's been around forever. He just died last year. Okay? Amazing in terms of he was promoting health starting in the 30s and 40s and talking about working out and nutrients and then eventually juicing and getting your vitamins and minerals from raw foods, from the good stuff. But then he got into the organic side. 
That was him literally just before he died. Now this guy beat Arnold Schwarzenegger in a bodybuilding competition as Arnold was getting started. Okay, this guy was, he was great, but he was an all-natural guy. Okay, he wasn't doing any steroids or anything like that. Oh, going back. So that was him. I don't know why it's not sticking, but that was him. Pretty built guy, okay? So, you got to have a mentor in life. So, for me, my mentor, I have a couple, I have a few. I have my father over here, that's my mother and my father. They were just down here in Atlanta. And the reason why I wanted to show you that is, when you're talking about help or making choices, you really have to have reasons beyond yourself. Uh, if everything is about yourself, and only yourself, it's very hard to make big choices or reach big goals. When you have a big goal out there, you really want other people to get behind you and support you. And in terms of my father, he's my mentor because, you know, as a father figure, he was there for all the baseball games and football games. He was there, you know, rooting me on, doing all the things he did. But at some point in his life, he stopped taking care of himself. And just over the last 15 years, his health has gone all the way down. Diabetes type 2, uh, he had chronic inflammatory bowel disease where they had to cut out his intestines, uh, reconnect it. It took him nine months to heal from that. He's got foot drop, he's blind in one eye. He's falling apart. Now, check this out. I have another reason why that, you know, taking care of my health is important. And all of you have this in your life, and you will. I have someone special in my life. Okay? And I want to have babies with this person someday. Okay? So do I have a responsibility beyond myself to be a healthy father, to be a healthy husband? Yeah, I do. But I'm going to have some kids and I'm going to have someone that, that relies upon me to be healthy. I better do something now to protect myself. So here's the interesting thing. This guy on the right, crazy looking guy, is my dad. Okay? And the other guy on the left is my uncle. They're the exact same age. This guy is so healthy, fit, unbelievable, okay? Uh, 81 years old. They're both 81. My father, falling apart, completely falling apart, all by choices. He chose to be active. He chose to be physically fit. I mean, he literally was a, uh, he started off as a plumber, and then he got in the construction industry, and he built houses physically, his own hands. He eats great, he takes care of himself, he golfs in his 80s. My father lays on the bed, reads a book with the dog, doesn't do a thing. So what I'm telling you is there's a lot of choices in life. And this is my family, and you all have family members that are going to deal with health issues. And you have to really inspire them. I know this is a general health class, but some of you will go into health care as a result of this class and classes like this. It may not be everybody. But one of you may turn into a doctor, two of you may turn into nurse or clinicians in some way, shape, or form. So what do you want to be like when you get older? In fact, here's another question I want to ask you. When do you think you're going to die? <coughs> what age? What age do you think you're going to die? I want to be 100 or over. 100 or over. Anybody else? 50. 50. Let me say <laughs> what other age do you would you think you're going to die at? 60, 70? Okay, 60, 70. Anybody more than 100? More than 100? 200, wow. That's pretty cool. 120? Okay, I will tell you that today's technology, you can probably get to 120. But who said 60 or 70? Okay, let's choose 70 for a second. Now let's back it up one year. It's six, you're 69. How do you want your health to be at 69? Do you want to be walking around on a little walker with tennis balls? Like this? <laughs> do you want to be upright, great posture, working out, feeling strong, clear brain? You want to be strong and active, right? You want vitality, you want life. If you're 69, and you have all those good things happening, what's the chance of you dying at 70? No. It's pretty slim. Could we save your life and maybe get to 120 if you do the right things starting now and eventually as you get older? Yeah, you absolutely could. There's, see, there's no reason to die at 60 or 70. 
My grandfather died at 61. I remember it was two weeks after Thanksgiving. Two weeks, so you go home for Thanksgiving, uh, seemingly looked good, uh, even though he was really big and fat and he smoked every single day, um, didn't do any exercise, but he didn't have, uh, he did, wasn't showing signs of heart problems. Two weeks later, he went into the hospital, had a heart attack, and within three days died. Okay, so why? Was he having signs and symptoms? Some people have signs and symptoms, some people don't. I pulled this definition up just for myself and for you, and I think that your teacher has this. This is from the World Health Organization. You guys can look this up. The definition of health. Health is a state of complete physical, mental, social well-being, and not merely the absence of disease or infirmity. So, if I don't have any symptoms, symptom-free, does that mean I'm healthy? Can you be healthy and have no symptoms? Can you be sick and you didn't even know it? Yes. So I have watched 31 people from my gym, not the gym that we work out in, one of the old gyms, die as a result of many different things from, from uh, recreation drugs to regular drugs. 31 people. That's a lot of people. I didn't think that was going to happen. And I was there when one of my mentors, George Hyder, who was a trainer, big guy, big Marine guy, and I was there the day he came into the gym and, and he would inspire me every day. He had these great statements and sayings and he was, he's, because he was a military guy, a Marine guy, and he was used to uh, leading us at that level, he, he'd literally walk into the gym this guy would yell from across the gym in, in a Marine voice and get you inspired. I mean, it was like, wow, this guy is tough. I remember on a Saturday I walked in and I was supposed to work out with him and he goes, hey, hey Mike, I, I, I can't work out with you. I said, what's going on? He goes, uh, something's wrong. And this guy was only 36 at the time, 37, because I can't work out. I said, why? He goes, my legs are all swollen. There's, I don't know, something's wrong. And I said, I was a student at that time. I said, let me see your legs. And their leg, his legs had blown up. Now this is a guy who's 6'2", 260 pounds of hardcore muscle. Worked out, ate good, but he did a lot of other things that none of us knew about. Three days later, he died. He wound up going into the hospital. His kidney shut down. His heart stopped because the kidney controls the heart in terms of certain uh, uh, chemicals. And then he had a brain aneurysm. And we were literally there at his bed when the doctor said, um, we're going to have to pull the plug. And you're sitting there going, He's done. He's toast. He's gone. So we sat there and we waited for the machines to shut down and then we waited for his body to shut down, which only took about 10 minutes. And then he was gone. And so the reason why I'm telling you this is here's a guy who was seemingly fit and healthy, strong. How was he that strong two weeks before he died? His body was wreaking havoc on him. Okay. Now whether he told anybody he had symptoms or not, we don't know because he didn't tell any of us. But he, he checked out early. You don't have to check out early. So I want to make this point clear is you got to have reasons beside yourself and you got to be proactive. So there's three types of stress that the body goes through. Physical, we know football, events, sports, things like that, car accidents. Those are physical stresses. You've got chemical stresses. Those are things like pollutants and the things we put in our body, okay? Some things we totally control, some things are sometimes out of our control. And then emotional stress, okay? At the top picture you see someone just stressed out at work, it could be just interchange school for a second. You know, you're doing a double major and you're staying up all night, you're banging down Diet Cokes and all the other stuff and all this other junk. Or you're just stressed out and angry, okay? So that which is eaten to sustain life, provide energy, and promote growth and repair tissues is the purpose of food. So food actually has a purpose, right? It's supposed to give us nutrients. 97% of all of our cells regenerate within a year. 97%. So if I put, sorry to pick on you, I'm sure you're a good person. If I put this in my body a couple times a week and it has all the bad chemicals in here, oh, by the way, 
drinking a diet soda is the number one way to gain weight because it wreaks havoc on your body. Do you guys know what aspartame is? Okay. So it's the sweetener in here. Do you know what it, it does in the body? So it converts over to wood alcohol and then converts over to formaldehyde. What's formaldehyde used for? When you die, they inject formaldehyde in your body so you don't decompose. It's a preservative. What do you think that does to your brain as it converts over? What do you think it does to brain health? How strong is your brain health? This is all linked right now. I have an article over here to cancer. Enjoy that drink. <laughs> okay? But if you think I'm kidding, the, si the science and the research is there, guys. Uh, I'm not sitting here, you know, don't kill the messenger, right? If you know this information, I I'm going to give you a lot of information today, and you guys are going to make choices. Some of you are going to say, he doesn't know what he's talking about. That's cool. But I got a clinic right down the road taking care of these people that their lives have spun upside down as a result of choices. So start thinking about these things. Types of hormones. There is a difference between a fat burning hormone and a fat storing hormone. Okay? Growth hormone, insulin like growth factor, gluc uh, glucagon, adrenaline, thyroid hormones, and testosterone. Those are fat burning hormones. The fat storing hormones are insulin, estrogen, and cortisol. Everybody's heard of these. You may not know what they all do, but you've heard of these. The food that you eat interrupts with the normal hormone production, or it helps it out. So it either supports it or it fights it. So what kinds of foods can you eat that would support you? Protein is a good one, which is made of what? Amino acids. So protein supports growth hormone, insulin-like factor, and oh, by the way, it stabilizes what? Blood sugar. So what's, why is blood sugar important? Anybody? What's the number one disease out there that has a blood sugar problem? Diabetes. Diabetes. Does anybody know anybody with diabetes? Raise your hands. Okay. Does anybody know di anybody with diabetes that they've lost a leg or a toe or gone blind or they have heart issues? I don't know. Okay. This is just blood sugar, right? I can eat this. I can drink this soda all day long. I can drink it but it's wreaking havoc on the blood sugar because it makes the cells immune to the insulin. It can't absorb it, can't work with it. So, do you think that people with diabetes, which is called adult onset diabetes type 2, there's type 1, you're born with it, your pancreas doesn't produce the insulin, type, and, and, and that's called an autoimmune condition, or type 2, that's adult onset, meaning I ate my way into it. My lifestyle, the choices I made, Lack of exercise, eating this stuff, putting it in my body over the course of time. My body said, I can't handle it anymore, man. I'm, I'm shutting down. If that's the case, and you knew that this is going to lead you down that path, how likely are you to give this to yourself again? Hey, okay, how about this? Would you feed this to a baby? Well, why? Why would you give it to yourself if you're not going to feed it to a baby? So, why? Marketing. Why? Because I just want it, right? So here's the thing. Some people believe they're dealt a deck of cards in life and that health just happens or happens to fall apart. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to... Can I, help, can I have you help me and you help me? I want you to pass out to this side one card and for you guys over here one card each. Yeah, one card each. So what I'm doing over here, guys, is I'm giving you your deck of cards. Okay? What's on this card, you now have. You now have the diseases and the problems <coughs> that you think will never happen to you. Okay? So which one do you have? I have diabetes type 2, thyroid issue, and I have extra weight gain, depression. So he's got diabetes type 2, thyroid. Does anybody know where the thyroid gland is? Right here. He gets Okay. Does anybody know what the thyroid gland does? It regulates your fat, your gain, and losing weight. Awesome. It regulates metabolism. So what is metabolism? Metabolism is your, is your cell going through the normal cell process. Nutrients come in, 
It eventually divides and it splits off baby cells. That's metabolism. It, oh, by the way, burns energy, right? So you've got diabetes, type 2, thyroid issues, excessive weight gain, depression, and anxiety. Does it sound like any people that you may have come in contact with? Yeah, but not all of these. Not all of them, right? Okay. What do you have over here, Diet Coke? <laughs> Re read those out. Quit picking on us. God. Uh-huh. 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 Hashimoto's disease. Hashimoto's. Uh-huh. Thyroiditis. And rheumatoid arthritis. I gave her big giant words on there. So, chronic pain. Anybody know anybody with chronic pain? <coughs> of course they do, right? GI, gastrointestinal or digestion. Okay, that's your GI tract. Autoimmune diseases. Multiple sclerosis is an autoimmune. Anybody ever see or hear about someone with MS? Okay, multiple sclerosis. Okay? Hashimoto's thyroiditis, again, is an autoimmune thyroid. Your metabolism doesn't work. There's all kinds of symptoms. And rheumatoid arthritis. Everybody hears about people that have arthritis. Rheumatoid means when their knuckles get swollen and inflamed and everything changes. So you've seen people walking around like this. That's rheumatoid arthritis. It's an autoimmune inflammatory condition. So when you see people and you think it's only old people, it's not only old people. People in their 30s are getting this. Why are they getting this? Why is a, why is a, a nine-year-old girl getting her period? Why is, that, why, why is that happening now? But that's not the normal process for a girl to go through, okay? It's not. So it's, it's literally the chem chemicals that are being put inside of her body. And who gets to make the decision on a 9-year-old or 10-year-old? Her, her parents. Right, so whose responsibility is this when it comes down to it? All of ours. Because we're all going to be at some point in time parents, aunts, uncles, whatever. We're going to be a mentor at some point. So it's, it's literally our responsibility. So here's some testimonials of some of our patients. I was having issues with low testosterone, overweight, tired, just feeling sluggish all in general. And I um, was really tired of modern or pharmaceutical medicine. So a friend of mine who was a nurse recommended uh, Petri Real Rehabilitation Center. I've lost between 29 and 30 pounds, and um, energy levels were great. Uh, I'm not just dead tired all the time. I actually feel like I want to go walk or run or play tennis or whatever. And um, it's just, I mean, it's amazing what happened in four weeks. Thank you. 
a lot of problems with um, chronic inflammation and chronic fatigue, and I just figured a lot of that had to do with um, me being overweight. So um, by coming to Petri Health and Rehab, I discovered what was really causing me to stay inflamed and to have the problems that I was having. So immediately I cut out almost 100% of everything that it said for me not to eat. And I almost instantly began losing the weight with these and the joint pain was going away and the inflammation was gone and the joint pain was gone. Now some of it is still there and it's still a work in progress, but it has um, really done really well. So, you think that for those people that were up there, that changed their life, the, the, the lady uh, that has a three-year-old daughter? She's still a patient in my practice. We're still working with her. She told me the other day when I sat uh, with her that she had to give her child to her neighbor during the daytime because she was so exhausted she couldn't care for her daughter. So her husband's at work. And she's at home supposedly trying to take care of her, her child. She can't take care of herself. So she's so run down, she has to give her child to her neighbor so she can sleep during the daytime to try to get her body normal. Okay? So functional medicine, what we talked about initially, what's the difference between traditional medicine and functional medicine? Functional medicine says, I look at the whole person, not just a piece of that person. Traditional medicine says, if I have a gland problem, called an endocrine problem, the endocrine system is your glands and your hormones, and I go in and I see an endocrinologist, and that endocrinologist does a couple labs, but as soon as he detects that you have either a high or low level, he or she does what? They put you on a drug. One drug for this problem, that's it. They don't look at anything else, they don't pay attention to anything else, and what do these people do after a period of time? Their body gets used to that drug, so it no longer works because it starts to adapt. And you also never got to the underlying cause of what was causing that hormone to go out of control. The body types you see over here are four different types of bodies uh, that have four different types of problems. The first body type is an estrogen dominant person, meaning estrogen is wreaking havoc on their body and this is what their body starts to develop like. The next person is an adrenal dominant person. Their adrenal glands which sit above the kidneys that are responsible to produce cortisol, uh, that's what the body starts to shape like. The thyroid, like we talked about, which is right over here in your throat, responsible for metabolism, that's what that body type looks like. And the last one is liver. Now that guy on the end looks like what? Looks like a guy? Looks like a beer drinker, right? Yeah. Well, guess what? You don't have to drink any beer or drink any alcohol to look like that. Because when your liver gets backed up, and the liver stops filtering the way it's supposed to, you gain weight, you store the fat. So it doesn't even matter at that point what you put in your body because your liver can't process it. What's your question? Estrogen is the female hormone? Yeah, estrogen is the female hormone. Yeah, estrogen, progesterone, and for males it's what? Testosterone. But guess what? You have testosterone in your body. He has estrogen in his body. It's just the difference is he has a lot of testosterone and very little estrogen, and you have the reverse. That's what makes men and women different is their hormones. So the studies now show that if you go above 10% of your body weight, 10%, that's not, that's not obese, 10% of your body weight, you get a fatty liver. Your liver gets filled with fat and it stops filtering. So how many people do we know that are 10% of our body weight, right? Do you need to be heavy? No. This guy is really lean, right? He can have a liver problem because he stops filtering or he puts the wrong things in and the liver can't do its job anymore. So I have patients that come in here into my office and they've gone to other doctors, their, their trip traditional allopathic doctor uh, that runs labs and they'll say that the labs are normal but they have all kinds of symptoms, all kinds of problems. Why is that? Well when you look at TSH which is called thyroid stimulating hormone, the hormone produced right here that regulates your metabolism to burn the fat, okay? 
you can have a big scale that the doctors look at in terms of a lab test. Abnormally low is 0.3 and abnormally high is 5.7. What's the range of it? That's like 20 times from the low side to the high side. So this is where they determine if I'm going to give you medication, you have to be below this or above this, okay? That's a huge range. Functional medicine, where I practice, what I do, is right between here. Functional lab range is when you hear functional, I want you to think optimal health. Not sick people, healthy people. Sick people are all over here on that wide side, those big giant numbers out there, okay? On just this one lab alone, we look at them and we say it's 1.8 to 3.0, that's functional, that's healthy. You need to be right there. Okay. Now let me, let me draw this analogy in your head. Telling people that they have a problem and waiting until they either fall out the bottom or go out of the top to give them a drug is kind of like this. Does anybody in here have a little brother or a little sister? Raise your hands. Them. Just have to make sure I'm at home. So you're on your front yard, brother, sister. Okay. So let's say that your brother and sister are in the front yard, and across the street their friends are outside, and they start running towards the street. Okay. And you're sitting there with your family going, "Looks like they're running towards the street. When do you think we should stop them? Should we stop them when they get in the street? When there's danger?" when they get to the sidewalk, or maybe a little sooner, because once they hit the sidewalk, the street is right there. Okay, so functional is, is saying, we're not gonna wait until you have a major disease to treat you. We're gonna catch it a lot earlier, and we're gonna try to get you back into that healthy range and keep you there. Traditional medicine says, I'm gonna wait until you have a full-blown <coughs> diabetes, thyroid disease, chronic fatigue, all these other things, then I'm gonna give you a drug. So what happens between here and here in a traditional medical doctor's office? This is what happens. They look at the lab and they say this. Why don't we just wait and see what happens? Let's wait. Let's, lo let's look at you a year from now. In a year, what do you think is going to happen if you're already going towards the street, towards danger? You're going to have the full-blown disease. Why would they do that? Let me tell you the reason why. Remember that first slide about money? Okay. Understand this. If I bill health insurance and I get paid by health insurance, I have to subscribe and bill according to their codes. Meaning, if they only allow me to prescribe medication here or below or there above, then I have to wait until you have a disease. I can't put you on this drug if you don't have the disease. So they kind of, as good as they are at emergency medicine and trauma, when it comes to chronic disease like this and health, optimal health, they are the wrong choice every single time. You go to your primary care doctor and you say, I'm not feeling good. They run a couple labs and they said, yeah, you're borderline diabetic, um, but we'll just wait, see how you do. And then you come back and you have diabetes. Now you're on oral medication and injectable medication, okay? It's not the way to go. So we say this in our office, we test, we don't guess, right? So testing is so important. We do it in school, we do it everywhere we go. So we test for testosterone, okay? Here's the normal range of testosterone. Again, looking at functional medicine or traditional. Traditional says 200 to 800. That's a huge range. But functional says, hey, <laughs> we want to be somewhere between 250 and 650. All right. Strong guy over here. Okay. Strong, tough, great. What do you think you're going to feel like if your levels are on the low side? Where's your energy? Yeah. What's your What's your relationship with your girlfriend, your spouse, your wife, if you're married? If your testosterone, the male sex hormone, is so low, not so good. Okay? Not so good. Not so good. You're not, you're not even interested in your spouse. Okay? The problem with this, guys, are that you have to be in this functional range when you're talking about this. The other doctors don't do this. 
They just wait till you have a problem, then they put you on a, a drug. What we do is we put you on amino acids called precursors or neurotransmitters. Okay, amino acids. So when I had you look at these guys, there's a couple things that I'm going to ask you to pay attention to. The number one thing you have to understand about health, there's two things that you're fighting against. Inflammation and autoimmune issues. Okay, Jot that down because she's going to ask you about this. Inflammation, what can I do to not cause inflammation in my body? And if I have an autoimmune disease like diabetes, like thyroid disease, Hashimoto's, like I wrote on the card, Hashimoto's thyroiditis, or rheumatoid arthritis, I've got to do something to build up my immune system. Who knows what the immune system does? Just a general sense. What's that? Anybody? Anybody? Bueller? Bueller? Immune system? What's, what's it do? Defense. Defense. It's a defense, right? <laughs> it's your defense system. Your immune system just protects you from all these microbes and all these things that we come in contact with to get inside of our body. So you have to do two things. You have to build up the immune system, number one, and you have to get rid of anything that causes inflammation in the body. Okay? <coughs> a couple other things you need to understand you're going to be having friends and family members that start talking about sleep issues. I can't sleep. I fall like her. She's tired. Maybe she didn't sleep so well. Maybe she, she did sleep so well, but she woke up tired. Cortisol, the chemical that gets produced out of these glands right here, the adrenal glands, that controls blood sugar and also your ability to fall asleep and wake up. Okay? So this is so important. So we test this. Okay? This is where it's supposed to be at different times of the day, okay? At nighttime, your cortisol level should be low, and in the daytime, it should be high, okay? You don't have, you're not going to get tested on that one, because there's a lot of science behind that. So which one do you have, okay? Which problem do you have going on in your body? Do you think that if we're talking about optimal health, should we wait until people have a full-blown problem to go get looked at? Okay. But who should you go to? You've just learned today that traditional doctors don't look at the lab values the same way that functional medicine doctors do. They're waiting till you have a disease. We're trying to prevent it from ever getting there. We're trying to make sure that that kid doesn't get into the street where the danger zone is. So who do you want to go to? You want to go to a doctor who literally focuses on the proper testing for the hypothyroid issue or the pre-diabetes or the adrenal stress, the stress that your body goes through and how your body handles that stress. Hormonal imbalance, toxicities, the chemicals we talked about. We do a blood test in the office that tests 350 food groups, chemicals, and pesticides to see if your body is, is either come in contact with or reacts negatively to these. So it could be literally just the simple foods that you think are healthy. I've had patients that salmon, okay, that they ate, caused inflammation and made their body wreak havoc against them from salmon or certain types of lettuce or other things. You don't know that. You just eat it, and you think, it should be okay for me. It's natural. I just wanted to know, do you guys take like insurance, though? You know what? It's a great question. It's not that we don't take insurance, but for this, these problems, insurance doesn't pay for wellness. What does insurance pay for? Sickness. 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 Sick care. So if... If I have my, I didn't bring my insurance card with me. Let's pretend this is an insurance card. Because I've got insurance. When I say that I've got all these problems to my doctor, what is he looking to do? Insurance. He's looking at insurance and saying, what does the insurance pay for? I can pay for this lab and I can pay for this drug. He's not paying for wellness. He's paying for symptom care. We're talking about wellness. So wellness, you're going to basically invest in your own wellness. As an example, did you come in in a car? Did the insurance company pay for the car? Why not? I don't pay for taxes. You don't pay for that. Okay. Do they pay for your vacations? No. So insurance companies are there really should be looked at as the worst case scenario. If I'm in a car accident, if, if, if I'm bleeding and I've had a seizure, I think I heard somebody that somebody had a bad situation earlier today, someone they know. 
I want to go to the emergency room and I want insurance to protect me to, to bring my life back. And also, medical bankruptcy is the number one cause of bankruptcy, medical bills. But when it comes to taking care of yourself, don't look for the health insurance companies to save you. It's not going to happen. They don't do that. They just take care of that other stuff, the worst case scenarios, okay? And digestive disorders, nervous system compromise. Which ones do you have? You've got to get tested, guys, okay? Now, at this age, do you think it's important to get tested? <coughs> we, we test, we, the parents bring their kids in all the time to get tested because they've dealt with ADD, ADHD, uh, learning disorders, uh, concentration problems, weight issues, emotional issues. So we test everybody. You don't have to wait until you have a major problem to get looked at. And you also can feel great and still get tested. I get tested anyway. I want to know way in advance if there's a problem starting. I want to catch it, okay? So when it comes to autoimmune issues, we talked about autoimmune means this. Your immune system, okay, doesn't recognize some part of your own body. So as a thyroid problem, your immune system doesn't recognize your thyroid as its own tissue, and it attacks it, okay? So that's when you hear autoimmune, think your body doesn't recognize itself, and it attacks it, okay? So 90% of thyroid symptoms in U.S. Men, women are due to an autoimmune disorder, 90%, okay? It's called Hashimoto's or Graves disease. Has anybody heard before today? Has anybody heard the term Hashimoto's or Graves? Okay. No. Okay. Graves. Graves. Okay. You know what's crazy about this Graves disease, which is an autoimmune? When it goes out of control, their eyes bug out of their heads. Okay. Everything changes. Everything changes because this little gland that's supposed to do its job is literally not being recognized by your own body. What's causing that, guys? Your immune system is not healthy, and all those inflammatory attacks against the body, caused by what? The foods that we eat, the chemicals that we ingest, all cause inflammation. So remember those two things. Inflammation we got to get rid of, and you got to build up your immune system. Those are the two important things I want to leave you guys with today. Okay? So the missing pieces. This is what we do in our office. We start with a detox. So we get the kidneys cleared, the liver cleared, the blood cleared, we get them healthy. It's a very simple thing. Sometimes it lasts for 21 to 30 days depending on the patient. Okay, it's a special type of diet and it's special nutraceuticals that they go on to clean their body. We talked about nutrition as being really important here. Okay, so we put them on a very specific meal plan based on testing to see what they test positive for. Fitness, do you think exercise is important, guys? Do you, do you think exercise is kind of important? Okay. So why is it important? Why do we, I mean, we don't have to exercise, but if you really want to be strong at 70 or 90 or 120, do you think exercising could play a little bit of a role in there? It does, right? Hormone balancing. If all of a sudden her hormones got out of balance, and now she has lots of testosterone and very little estrogen. What happens to her? Lots of acne, hair, voice deepens. Those are ma that's a male hormone. So she starts taking on kind of like male effects. Consequently, if he has too much estrogen, he starts having symptoms of what? Female body types. Guess what is supposed to be healthy, but we now know is not, is a major estrogen food, soy. Who here thought soy was healthy? Right? Guess what? It's, it's estrogen, and the body sees it as estrogen, so the more soy you eat, especially men, the more estrogen you get. You don't need more. Women don't need more than what they currently have. Your body's producing what it needs, but if you start eating these foods on a regular basis, you become hormonally out of balance. And the nervous system, the brain and the spinal cord, that's the master control system of the body. That's what tells all the other cells and tissues what to do. So that has to function at 100%. So, again, in our office, we treat the whole person and we put the pieces together by literally adding 
all these factors together to make a complete system. So if we're talking about your health or your health, which one of those pieces over there do you want to leave out when it comes to your health? Mm. What does nervous system entail exactly? Your brain and your, and your spinal cord and how it communicates. Definitely want that. You want that. I don't want to leave any of them. All right. 100%, right? Why would you leave the most, one of the most important things out when it comes to your health? So you don't. So don't you want to find a doctor or a group of doctors that kind of understand this? It, how's, how's one more? Wouldn't you rather have a doctor that lives this? Do you think I take care of myself? Do I look like I have decent posture? I work out 7 a.m. every single day with, with this monster over here. Do we push it? Yeah, we push it. Do I eat great nutrition? Sure I do. Okay, so you want to find someone that, that really has a system. So 94% of all failure is due to not having a system. We have a system in our office, how we bring our patients through and bring them through a curriculum of health. So like you're learning a curriculum right now, our patients go through the same thing. We give them a three-ring binder, and we teach them throughout the course of a year how to get their health back themselves, okay? So this last statement I really like. Tell me, and I may remember. Show me, and I will remember. But involve me, and I will understand. So what we're talking about here is the partnership that we have with our patients is not like a traditional doctor's office. We have long-term relationships with our patients. We, we literally spend lots of time with them. On average, we can spend anywhere from 30 minutes to an hour with each individual patient seeing one of our team members. Every time they're in the office, uh, you come in for a couple different things that you're working on from a sports side. We spend time with our patients. They're not in and out of the office. They get things handled. They feel better. Okay? That's a Chinese proverb. So, what do you think? You think you think that's how we're going to get to our health? Maybe lip, sit back on the couch with a remote and a beer, and that's going to get us there. We're going to procrastinate. So when you have a family, what do you think is going to happen if, if this happens? This guy's gone because of health. Or if you want to exchange the wife out too. What, what do you think happens to the family unit? Do you think your health just affects you? Or does it affect all the people you love and that love you? And we all have different people in our life. So you don't want to make bad choices so that they have to start taking care of you. Okay? So can you predict the future of your health? Yes, you can. Okay? By testing, by going to the right doctors, by understanding that it's first your decision for health. You've got to do the right things. You've got to do all the components we talked about. You don't want to leave them out. And you have to literally feed your body good nutrients. So as I finish up today, and I want to open up to some questions because I know that what I want for you guys to do is start to think about people that are in your life that you care about, uh, family members that have these problems, and ask me a question about it. You know, think about this for a second. This is so important. <clears throat> Nobody really likes going to a doctor's office, okay? <clears throat> it's, it's not the best experience for anybody to, to not feel good and have to go to a doctor's office. We just happen to be an upbeat, friendly office that everybody does like to go if they have to go. But I want you to think about some people that are in your life right now that have these conditions, diabetes, thyroid problems, weight issues, hormonal issues, energy brain chemistry, depression, anxiety, you probably start thinking of a bunch of people that you know, okay? You need to know where they should go. You need to also start to be a leader in their health. I got my friend over here who's got two nice pieces of fruit. And I got my other friend over here, I'm so sorry that I'm picking on you, okay, that has this. What do you think is <coughs> for the body? This or that? Yeah. Okay. It's true. Okay. Did you also know, I'm going to use this as an example right over here in terms of orange juice. Do you know how much sugar is in eight ounces of orange juice? It's more sugar in it than a can of Coke. More sugar. 
But wait a second, it comes from oranges. It doesn't come from with the pulp and all where the nutrients are. It's squeezed in, and all you get is the sugar, the leftover sugar. So there's more sugar, and this isn't orange juice, this is vitamin water, but there's more sugar in orange juice. So when you drink orange juice every single day, thinking you're doing something good for your body, what are you doing to the, the, the cells that are responsible for blood sugar if you dump 12 teaspoons of sugar all at once with an 8-ounce glass? You're making them insulin resistant, right? So they can't accept the sugar anymore. You think that's good or you think that's bad if you do it over and over and then you add all those other things to it. It's probably bad. Yes. So when we buy orange juice, what should we look for? What you should look for is eating an orange versus drinking orange juice. That's what you should ultimately do. Okay. Now, I'm not saying you can't ever have orange juice, but if every day... How about this? Someone tell me what they had for breakfast this morning. I just Anybody, don't, don't worry about it. Just, what's that? Love and cereal, love and charms. Well, I mean, yeah, love and charms and milk. Lucky like, like charms and milk. Anybody else? Scrambled eggs. Scrambled eggs. What else? That's it? Orange juice. Okay. Anybody else? Muffin. 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 Okay. So great, great, great different choices, right? Lucky Charms. I've had Lucky Charms before. Don't think I haven't had this stuff. But do you think it's healthy? No. Probably not. Do you think it's full of? Yeah. <laughs> What's that? Oh, okay. So the grains. What do they do to our wheat in our country? Genetically modify the wheat. It's fructose. It's shoved with corn syrup. Okay. I just saw something the other day. It made me sick to my stomach. Do you know that they feed cows candy now? Yes. Did you know that? Do you know why they do that? Because corn, the price of corn, which they were feeding cows, has gotten so expensive because we're trying to go towards natural energy sources, right? So we're trying to get away from oil and we're trying to use natural. So corn prices have gone up, so the farmers can't afford to feed them corn, so they substitute them with candy. So, okay, so a cow eats candy and they get fat really quick because it's lots of sugar and they get fat. Slaughter the cow, you eat the cow. Why aren't they feeding it in grass like the cows are supposed to eat? Grass fed. It's not so, even, it doesn't even exist. Right, so they do the same thing with, with uh, fish hatcheries. Not wild fish, but hatcheries where they're born, they're given grains to fatten them up and sugar to fatten them up. And they, they grow very quickly and then we get to eat them. So when you eat this stuff over and over and over and over again and years go by, your body starts breaking down saying, this isn't nutrients. It looks like a fish. It looks like a cow, but it's, it's been fed all this crap and then weed. So let's do this. Let's open up the, uh, the floor, floor for some questions. Anybody have any questions about anybody that they know that's having a problem? Go ahead. Well, actually, it's myself. Okay. Um, and what it does is then to my family, more so my mother's side. My grandmother died at 49. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess she had a heart attack. Okay. Uh, one of my aunts died at 69. Mm -hmm. Dropped dead, heart attack. Mm -hmm. I can only have high blood pressure. Mm -hmm. And the doctor just wants to give me this medicine, one medicine, and he's like, oh, you try this. Oh, I go to another doctor, oh, you should try this. I personally don't want to take none of it, right. but I know I need to do something right. to control my, right. my blood sugar, blood pressure. Yeah, sure. So how do I go about trying to change this without having to take medicine? Because everybody says, once you start the medicine, there's no getting off. There isn't. It's, it's literally, it's like, it's like a, it is a drug pusher. I mean, the same things that you see on TV or people, you know, that push the other drugs, it's the same thing that's just done by pharmaceutical companies. It's no difference. Um, the, you first ask the question to whatever doctors you go to, can you teach me how to get healthy? What kind of curriculum can you enter me in? What kind of education can you give me? How can you show me how to do this so I don't end up like my family members? with major problems and dying way too early. Generally speaking, those doctors don't have a solution for you. Okay, so you have to find people like myself or somebody else out there that does this right now and says, all right, we're gonna grab you, we're gonna change your lifestyle. Everything that you understand, we're gonna flip it and turn it and get you to change your own life so that not only for you, 
but for all the people that you care about that you're around and not passing 49, 59, or 69. Which 49, I mean, come on. I mean, it's, there was some other stuff behind it, but sure. yes. Sure. Uh, so I guess the other question is, would it, like you said, people like yourself, how expensive is it? Like, is it, that's the problem. Like, people, that's why they said uh, probably struggling people have the most health issues because they can't, they can't afford, afford yeah. the kind of care you're offering. Yeah. So how expensive is it to come and see me? Okay. Am I am I cheap? No, I'm not cheap. Right. Mm -mm. I work really hard to do what I do, and I charge a fee for it. But when I have students or people that are having struggles and financial issues, and they want to get healthy, am I going to help them? You betcha I am. We're going to get you into a discounted type of program where you can completely afford this. We're going to teach you what to do to get healthy. Because this is an education. When you come into my office for this type of care, functional medicine. We're educating you. So there's some choices you're going to have to make, some lifestyle changes you're going to have to make, but it's all affordable. Every patient that comes in, that comes in to see us, they're single mothers, uh, they're, they're, they're families that, that, especially in today's economy, which you guys all know about is not so good, um, and they're retirees. So we have to come up with budgets that fit their specific financial situation so they can get well. So it's all very affordable. Anybody else want a question? Anybody that knows anybody else that has these problems or, or is dealing with health issues? Well, right here. My dad had um, five heart problems. He had surgeries. They had to open the veins. Or I don't know what to call it. Sure. sure. And um, he has diabetes. And he has cholesterol. Cholesterol? Yeah. Is he on statins for cholesterol? You guys ever hear the term statins? It's on TV all the time. Um, so statin lowers your cholesterol level. Is cholesterol good or bad? It's actually, it's really good. There's two types of cholesterol, HDL, LDL, and body cholesterol and food cholesterol are two different cholesterols. Don't get them mixed up. Whoever created the term cholesterol made a big mistake a long time ago, should have called it two different things, so everybody thinks, I can eat my way out of cholesterol issues. What's the number one best thing to do to lower your cholesterol? Exercise. Exercise. It'll drop you by 50 points, 75 points, just by doing a little exercise. How old you that? Almost 80. Okay. How's his health spiral down? Well, he moves a lot, so... So he keeps active as much as he can. Yeah. And, and what is he like in terms of his brain function and all the other stuff? Is he as sharp as he once was? He's a very big, successful businessman. So, he's six, so, so it hasn't grabbed him. He's, he's dealing with the symptoms with drugs. Yes. Okay. So, so here's the thing, guys. Some people will go and go and go, and then they'll drop dead. They'll drop dead. They just go and go and go because they artificially change the chemistry with drugs. They think they're healthy. They keep going and going and going, revving that engine up. And then all of a sudden you get the phone call, so-and-so just dropped out of a heart attack. Now, how were they healthy? You know that statement, healthy as a horse, then they dropped out of a heart attack? How were they healthy the day before and then dropped dead? They weren't healthy. They weren't healthy at all. So you can be on all this medication and hide the symptoms because you're chasing symptoms. Or you can be proactive and do all the things we talked about so you don't have to be on drugs at all. I mean, it's not like when you're on Lipitor or this cholesterol-lowering medication or statins that your body all of a sudden ran out of that drug and you need to replenish it. It's there's a problem in the body. And your body's telling you, i got to do, do, move me, make me eat good foods, and, and help me be healthy. So... Again, a situation like that, he's got to be. He's got to find somebody that says he's got to want it. Number one, and he's got to find someone that knows what they're doing. Okay. Yes. Um, my stepdad actually has diabetes, but he's the type of man that he doesn't like anybody to tell him anything. That's yep. the problem. So my father, you saw a picture of him. He doesn't also want to be told anything. So his son, me, handles this every day. My mother's a nurse. My sister's a nurse. And my brother's wife is a nurse. we got lots of medical in our family. He doesn't want to listen to us. You saw the picture of him. He's the guy like this. My uncle, 
We just went to New York a couple weeks ago to uh, have a family reunion, and when I went and saw 9-11, the picture of myself and my girlfriend was from the 9-11 memorial, and it was myself, my girlfriend, and my uncle walking around all of New York, and this guy, he raced me in his 80s. He's like, come on, let's see if I still have it. He's racing me. My father couldn't go with us. He's too sick. He's on all the medication. That's not where, really, where I want my father's life to be. He's basically dying a slow death. And his life, I mean, for my mom, she doesn't get to travel with him. She doesn't get to enjoy life with him because she constantly has to take care of him. So I don't think that's really a, a good life. So anybody else before we finish up? My grandpa had, he's a type 2 diabetic, and he goes to dialysis all the time. His, his liver doesn't function well. And I don't know where he is going or who is treating him, but my grandma is very deceived. She has this list of foods that, like, that he can and cannot eat. Like, he has artificial sweeteners in his coffee every morning. My grandma says he's not allowed to eat uh, tomatoes because they have too much potassium. And like the list of fruits and vegetables, she's convinced that he cannot eat. Yet, they'll go out and like go to Cracker Barrel, go get fast food and stuff. What do you think would be appropriate for him to eat and for me to maybe convince my grandma that she's deceived because... It's really easy. We do a blood test and we test 350 foods and chemicals and pesticides and it actually shows what they can have that doesn't interact or have a problem and what actually causes a problem in their body. So I don't guess. Remember, I, you know, don't guess, test. We test it out. Now, you can eat a healthy lifestyle. Uh, uh, L.A. talked about the paleo foods. Kind of cave, paleo means caveman diet, right? So it's kind of back to old ancestors where we just ate what was natural. That's a great start. In fact, if they can't get to a person like me, get them hooked up with some paleo. Reading about that, anti-inflammatory foods, write it down. Paleo, paleo foods, right? Um, the paleo diet is a great diet, but it's not specific enough for someone's specific chemistry. So if I really want to hone in and say, let's get to optimal health, I want to know what your chemistry is, so I'm going to test it, okay? But, yeah, I'm sorry to hear that, but um, there is better ways out there. Anybody else? Yeah? What about those um, protein weight loss programs? That is like a shake, mm -hmm. replaces uh, breakfast and dinner. Mm -hmm. Do you think those are healthy? So it just depends on the product. So, you know... A, a, a meal replacement protein drink is great, but you got to look at what's inside the label, right? Because there's multiple different types of protein, number one, right? So we talked about soy, that's protein. It could be a soy protein, and then all of a sudden you're, you're thinking, oh, it's protein shake, it's supposed to be healthy, and all the while it's actually changing your hormones. Uh, sometimes whey protein, which is formed from milk, people have milk allergies. They're called lactose intolerant. We've heard of this all before, right? So you have to look at the label and see which one is best for your unique chemistry. But do I, do I take in protein? Every day I have a protein powder that works for me and directly after my workout I get some protein in first and then I get some, some other things from, I actually, you know, I'll, have, like, I'll do an egg white omelet and I put in spinach uh, and some vegetables right in the morning after my protein shake, just a little protein, a little bit of carb and boom. Because I just, what did I do with the workout? I depleted my body of everything that I had stored. I'm exhausted and I need to replenish. So, no other questions, guys. Thanks so much for letting me uh, come here. I appreciate it. I hope that you learned a little bit. I'm sorry that I picked on you. Uh, but in every class, there's always someone that has a, a Diet Coke. So, it just happened to be you today. So, uh, thanks so much. If you want to ask me questions privately afterwards, I'm going to stick around and, and, and we're going to do this again for the next class.